Good morning, everyone, and Shabbat Shalom. We are here, and that's about it. That's what we need to keep in mind, <laughs> continually remembering, I am here. I am here, and I am now. So uh, just thankful to be here today, thankful for another Sabbath that Hashem has blessed us with, um, thankful for this message, and always the opportunity, again, to teach and preach, and it's truly an honor. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and start this morning, if you would, let us all stand in one of everybody's favorite chapters, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And uh, we'll teach on this this morning, we'll get into other points from other verses and other chapters, uh, and we'll probably even talk about Ecclesiastes 3 on the Sabbath too, so Saturday. But Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1, to all there is an appointed time, even a time for every pursuit under the Shamayim. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to loose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to be silent, and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for battle and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the task Elohim has given to the sons of men to be humbled by it. He has made it all pretty in its time, even the ages he has put in their hearts, except that no one finds out the work that Elohim does from beginning to end. I know that there is no good for them but to rejoice and to do good in their lives, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor, it is a gift of Elohim. I know that whatever Elohim does is forever. There is no adding to it and there is no taking from it. Elohim does it that men should reverence before him. Let us lift our eyes. Hashem, Adonai, Elohim, Elyon, Most High, thank you for this day that you have given us. Uh, you have set this part, uh, set apart this day that we might remember you. May we understand why we keep these festivals, why we keep these days. Uh, to draw closer to you, we pray, give us a peace of mind that we might focus on what is important now uh, and to speak your word clearly, that we might understand it, speak it easily to where we can apply it to our lives, Hashem, uh, and grow closer to you. We just want to honor you with everything that we are. You truly are Elohim. There is no one beside you, the creator of the Shemaim and the Aretz. You have done all things and all things consist in you. You are Elohim. We are your people. Baruch Hashem. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1, I, I do really like Ecclesiastes 3. Um, my favorite thing in Ecclesiastes 3 is when it gets around verse 10, 11, 12, uh, understanding more about those verses. But I uh, do really like Ecclesiastes 3, and we talk about this often. So, Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1, to all there is an appointed time, even a time for every pursuit under the Shemaim. So, to all there is an appointed time, that is Zaman. It is a set time or appointed time. The root of that is Zaman, not Zimon, but Zaman. It is fixed, to fix. So there is a fixed time for everything, an appointed time for everything. So what we want to get out of this, just beginning in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 this morning, and even as he gets into verse 11, everything has a beginning and an end. Everything. There is a time for everything. There is an appointed time for everything. Everything has a beginning and an end. Okay? Uh, I was reading through the uh, art scroll, and it talked about even the riches of the wicked. Um, they rejoice in their riches, but there is a time when they will be given up and given to the righteous. You look at Egypt, that happens, okay? At the very end, when they were coming out of Egypt, they took, plundered Egypt and took everything that they had as they came out. So there isn't a time, there is an appointed time for everything. Then you have the pursuit, that is kafetz. It is, there is a delight, a pleasure. The pursuit here is what is written in uh, this version, which means there is a desire, a matter and a purpose for everything, okay? An appointed time, an appointed season. Everything has a beginning and an end, everything. If you are happy, there's an end to it, okay? 
But on the flip side of that, if you're having a long period of sadness, there's also an end to that. So know that you are humbled by the fact, and this is what we're going to talk about a little bit on Saturday, and this is what we see as we go through Ecclesiastes 3. You're humbled by the fact to understand just how little control that you have. There is an appointed time for everything, okay? Uh, I learned that about myself this week. You will learn a lot about yourself being secluded. You will learn a lot about yourself in your alone time. Uh, the guy that I was listening to yesterday, he said, I learned a lot about myself when I was alone. I went hiking alone. I ate alone. I did this alone. He said, you will learn a lot about yourself by being alone. Okay? And it's true. Uh, you'll learn what you are, who you are, where you are, where you stand. Okay, But the, the root of that is when you spend time alone, you lose your need for validation. You lose your people-pleasing abilities, okay? Because you realize that you don't need the approval of people. You don't need the acceptance of others. People who genuinely love you in your life love you for who you are without you trying to impress them, period. So, Stop working so hard to impress the people in your life to keep them, okay? You're wearing yourself out. You're wearing yourself out. So that's what I learned over this week of being alone. <laughs> it was me. I didn't fellowship with anybody. I did the Sabbath and I felt something was off the whole week. But then a shim comes to me and I'm just questioning within myself, what's wrong? And the sense is, I have been trying to impress people a lot of my life. I've been trying to get people's approval a lot of my life. And if you are waiting for people's approval in your life, the control of your life is in their hands. Your mood is based on their response. Whether or not they will accept you or not. Okay, who's taking care of you? Who's taking care of you? If you're trying to get the approval of everybody else and you're trying to make everybody else happy, who's making you happy? Right? So, and as we talk about it on Sabbath and as we get it here, lose your need for control, okay? And your life will feel a little bit more at ease, okay? Live now. Live presently. You are here. Okay, everybody, if you want to say it out loud or if you don't want to say it out loud and you just want to say it in your head, say, I am here. I am here. I am not there. I am not there. I am not thinking about what's coming up. I'm not thinking about what is past. I am present. So we all do it, every single one of us. We want to relive the past or we want to worry about the future. Yes, Every single one of us, okay? You have no control over what has happened and what's going to happen. You only have control over what is presently happening, okay? Over your life. So why are you worried about those things? You don't know. You don't know. So live now. So how can we live now? Everybody, close your eyes. Now take a deep breath. Listen. What do you hear? Focus, open your eyes now. <laughs> Focus on now. What's going on now, okay? You know you miss out on the beautiful things of life when you try to control what's going on around you, when you worry about what's coming up or what has already happened, the color of the trees, the sound of the wind, you've lost focus. That whole week, I lost my purpose. And for a long time, okay, I used to be the person that didn't let much affect him. Not much affected me in my life, okay? The people that were around me, the people, do whatever you want to do. It doesn't affect me, okay? But then I got to a point where I let everything affect me. And everything bothered me, okay? Another thing that I had realized 
through this week is when you are critical of others, you're judging others, okay? Now, discernment is very important in your life. You are supposed to have good judgment. If you allow people in your life, you have the ability to choose whether you continue to allow them in your life, okay? So you have the ability to choose over certain things, but uh, realizing that, that lack of control. Now, when you judge somebody and you're critical of others, and how many times have we done this? Oh, I wouldn't do that. Well, uh, I'll give you an example. So I messaged my friend Sunday, last Sunday, to go to the gym. He didn't answer me back. I wouldn't have done that. Why didn't he answer me back? I would have at least said, hey, I'm busy. Okay? Without even knowing, without even knowing what's going on in his life. So I have already started to be critical of him. I have already started to judge him for what he has done. You know what? He didn't wake up till 12. Okay? So I was already beginning to be critical of him and say, I wouldn't have done that. You could have at least said, hey, I'm busy. I can't do that. And I'd already judged him. Not knowing. Now, one side of this is you don't know what other people think about you. Come on. You don't really know what they think about you. You think you know. And sometimes we think that other people think negatively of us. And that's called the negative bias. We always want to lean toward the negative. What are they thinking? But you don't, you're not a mind reader. You don't know what they're thinking about you. So in your life, if you want to bring ease in your life, there's a lot of things that you got to let go. There's a lot of things that you got to let go. If you want your life to have a little bit more ease to it. Okay. So you don't know what they're thinking. Now, the other side of that, because we just hit that one point, the other side of this, when you are critical of others and you judge others and you're quick to judge others and uh, we're quick to uphold ourselves and say, well, I wouldn't do that. Okay. But on the other side of that, the reason that we do that is because we're critical of ourselves. That's why. It is actually an outward expression of what you think about yourself. You're so critical on yourself and you're so hard on yourself that you're hard on others. Okay? So back to, the, back to this, let it go. Why are you so hard on yourself? There's one verse that is in Ecclesiastes, and we'll get into it in, in, uh, on Saturday. It, and it says, enjoy your life, Ecclesiastes 3, enjoy your life. Drink your wine, enjoy, enjoy your wife, enjoy your life now presently because you don't know what is coming up, okay? Enjoy it now. But there is something that is even more uh, impressive in chapter nine, and he says, your works have already been accepted. Wow. Righteous man, wise man, you have a heart for God, you want to follow God, it says that you have already been accepted. You know what? That's what we want out of life, okay? If you go to a party, I don't know how many has ever been to a party. <laughs> it might just be a family gathering, okay? Have you ever been to a family gathering or party, parte, where um, someone who was throwing the party wanted it to be perfect? Yeah? How do you feel when you go to that party? You're not having fun at all. You don't have fun at all. Why? Because the person wants the party to be perfect. So their energy, their attitude is bleeding out into everybody else. Why do people go to parties? Why do people go to social events? Why do they go to family outings? You are there for connection. You are there for love. You are there for the fellowship. As soon as you get there, and this is what we think because we want the party to be perfect, so we want everything to, to be perfect. I want the food to be perfect. I want this setting to be perfect. And I want that to be perfect and this to be perfect. Your idea of perfection is not someone else's idea of perfection. So when they walk into your party, they just want the fellowship. They just want the connectedness. They just want to enjoy their time. So what if the food's not good? They don't care, okay? So, to come back to what we were saying, go easy on yourself. 
Don't be so critical of yourself. Don't judge yourself so hard. Don't scrutinize yourself so hard. And I tell you that you'll feel a lot better about your life. You can't control everything. Let go of your need for control. Okay? And then you'll start focusing on the things that you do have control over and the strength that comes from that. Okay? This is showing us that we, we hardly have any control. Okay? So lose the need for control and gain a life of ease. Things come and go. Things come and go. There is an appointed time for everything. There is a beginning and an end to everything. So let it come and let it go. Let it come and let it go. Ebb and flow, up and down. There is an appointed time for everything. Everything has a beginning and end. It is a fixed time. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. Uh, as you're looking through the art scroll, a lot of these different um, ups and downs, ebbs and, ebb and flow, a lot of this, uh, they, they say, is connected to war and peace. Okay, So in a time of peace, what do people do? Plant. In a time of war, what's happening? Everything's getting uprooted. Okay, A time to kill. Now they say when it comes to a time to kill, that could be because of justice or war, okay? There's a time for war, and in that time of war, it's a time to kill, okay? Uh, but there's also a time of justice, a time to kill. Uh, a time to heal. Uh, that time to heal, although we do not have the ability to heal, uh, it talked about here that that could be releasing someone from, from judgment, okay? Um, if, if they're under a trial and they have been released uh, because they are not guilty, they're innocent, what have you just done? They've been healed, okay? So a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. During a time of war, what are you doing? Breaking down. During a time of peace, what are you doing? You're building up. A time to weep, a time to laugh, back and forth. A, a time of war is a time to weep. A time of peace is a time to laugh. A time to mourn, a time to dance. A time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones. That is in reference to the temple, okay? And the temple being broken down, well, you know what, everybody? There's going to be a day of redemption. There's going to be a day when we are starting to gather stones again. Okay? They're going to gather stones to build the temple. A time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. Uh, they said the tear was a representation of a burial garment. And then the sowing is a wedding garment. So there are, there are ebb and flow of everything, okay? When these things come in your life, let them. Stop trying to control them. Stop, just embrace your life and love your life and live presently. That is the best advice that I can give you. And how can we start to live presently? Once everybody does it, everybody goes down the rabbit hole, right? Have you ever been down a rabbit hole? Okay, uh, we're thinking about a past event, we're reliving that past event or we're thinking about a future event that's going to happen and uh, this should happen, that should happen, I want to make all this. So we go down the rabbit hole, right? Okay. The only way for you to get back is to live presently. And how do you do that? Close your eyes. The best way to do that is go outside. Okay. Go outside, sit outside, close your eyes and listen. It will ground you. It will bring you back to where you are. Recognize the things around you, the breeze through the trees, the color of this, the color of that. We have lost our focus on what really means something in our lives. And we're so bent out of shape because we're so worried about everything. Right? Yeah. Okay, let it go. Let it go. A time to tear, a time to sow, a time to be silent, a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate. Both have uh, a purpose. I really like what they said in the art scroll about verse 8 because there could be one day an appointed time that you love something and the very next day you hate the exact same thing. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Talk about food, for an example. You eat a salad for a week and you love it, but that, uh, that eighth day you hate salad. 
Okay, you got salad running out of your ears. Okay, you hate it. So you could love and hate the same thing at different times. So it continues on. A time to tear, a time to sow, a time to be silent, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for battle, and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? If you are trying to force something out of its season, we talk about this often, you will wear yourself out. You will be humbled by it, okay? Uh, just one example is you can't make anybody love you. Going back to what we were talking about, you can't make anybody love you. No matter what you do, stop trying to impress people in order to gain their acceptance and approval. What is the answer to this? Love yourself. Know how to respect yourself. Know your own self-value. Know your own worth. Okay? Because if you know your strengths and you know who you are and you know your purpose, then it doesn't matter what people think about you. It's not going to hold you back the way people think about you. You're going to push forward no matter what. So, uh, if you try to do these things and you force these things and you try to gain control over these things, though you have no control over them, what does the worker gain from his toil? Verse 9, I have seen the task Elohim has given to the sons of men to be humbled by it. You are humbled by your need for control. You're humbled by it. And you're humbled by it when you realize just how little control you have. You have control over what you do. And you have control over how you react in every situation. When it's a time to love, how are you going to react? When it's a time to hate, how are you going to react? When it's a time to reap and sow, how are you going to react? Okay? I've seen the task, verse 10, Elohim has given to the sons of men to be humbled by it. He has made it all pretty in its time. So when, when it comes, when the bad times come, when the good times come, they serve a purpose in your life. Okay? You have learned more in your life through the difficult times than you had in the good times. Okay, it's better to go into the house of mourning than into the party with fools. That's also in Ecclesiastes. Okay? Because you are learning in your life. He has made it all pretty in its time, even the ages he has put in their hearts, except that no one finds out the work that Elohim does from, here we go, verse 11, beginning to end. Everything's got a beginning. Everything's got an end. So if you're going through a hard time right now, it's got an end, okay? It's going to end. It has an end. But you're humbled by it right now because you don't know when it is. You don't know when the end is. When is it going to get better? So you're humbled by it to look at Hashem and realize just how less control or how, how much control you don't have in your life. This is, goes back into the trust. To the trust. But talk. Trust in him. Be secure in him. That is also careless. There's a definition in Batak that is careless. We're just not there, are we? <laughs> so, no one finds out the work that Elohim does from beginning to end. I know that there is no good for them but to rejoice and do good in their lives. You know what that is screaming to me? Live presently. Okay? I tell you that you will have more peace of mind, you will have more ease of mind if you can ground yourself. So what's the most important thing to you right now? The message, the fellowship. That's the most important thing to you right now, not what you're going to do when you get home. Not what you're going to do next week. That's living presently. So, I know that there is no good for them but to rejoice and to do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of Elohim. So, that is the gift of God for you in, to enjoy your life. We've been taught so much that you, you shouldn't do that. You should just scrutinize yourself all the time and just be so hard on yourself all the time. I know that whatever Elohim does, verse 14, is forever. 
There is no adding to it and there is no taking from it. Elohim does it that men should reverence before him. It is over. Okay, so why are we talking about this today? Um, because this is the last day of unleavened bread. You know what? Now it's over. So that's why we're talking about this. Now unleavened bread is over. Last day, okay? Unleavened bread's over, but spring is beginning. So one thing has ended, something new is beginning. Okay? So what are we trying to get? There is always a chance, a chance for you to start over. There's always a chance for you to start over. As long as there is breath in your lungs, you have an opportunity to change. It can get better for you. It can. But you have to be willing. Uh, we do motivational, daily motivation on uh, Instagram. Um, and I'm thinking about changing it to daily discipline. Because you're not always motivated. You don't always want to do it. You're not always willing. But you know what? If you're disciplined, you do it anyway. You do it because it needs to be done. Okay? If you want to start exercising, you got to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. And the only time that you have is to get up at 4 o'clock. You don't always want to get up at 4 o'clock, do you? Okay? So what are you going to do? I'm going to discipline myself even though I don't want to. And I'm going to tell my body, this is what we're doing now. Whether you want to or not, this is what we're doing. Okay. Now follow. That's discipline. Even though you don't want to, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to do this for me. Okay. If you don't take care of yourself, who's going to? Nobody. So whose responsibility is it? yours. Okay. Now it's not a life of thinking only about me because what kind of life is that? You love and take care of others also, but if you're not going to take care of yourself, nobody's going to hop in and make you do it. That's your responsibility. So feel good about every little accomplishment that you take. If you're wanting to do a journey of, of exercise and wanting to do, to do a journey of, of diet and, and better uh, eating habits, small, small, I say that often, okay? Small, small, small little things, small, uh, small advantages. As long as there is breath in your lungs, you have an opportunity to change. Start something new. There will be an end to all things. Psalms 34. Psalms 34 and 12, who is the man that desires life? Me, <laughs> who loves many days in order to see good? Me, everybody, we desire life. Now, if you are living a miserable life because of the, the choices that you've made, you can change. You can change that, okay? You, everybody gets to a point. Some people don't get to a point, but some people do get to a point where they think, I'm done. Have you ever been sick and tired of being sick and tired? Then it's time to change. Okay? Then it's time to change. So, who loves life? Who has the desire to live? Who is the man who desires life, who loves many days in order to see good? Keep your tongue from evil, that is trouble, and your lips from speaking deceit. That is guile, being deceptive. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of Hashem are on the righteous. He's watching everything. And his ears unto their cry. The face of Hashem is against evil doers to cut off their remembrance from the earth, crying out and Hashem heard and delivered them out of their distresses. Hashem is near to the brokenhearted and saves those whose spirit is crushed. Many are the troubles, that's evils, raw, bad, evil, Unhappy, distress, many is the distress, the misery, many is the injury, the calamity, adversity, or the wrong. Many people do the righteous wrong. Many are the wrongs or evils or troubles of the righteous, but Hashem delivers him out of them all. Now that not Saul, that is to deliver, snatch away, rescue, save, recover, but I also believe it's a to defend. Okay? Now, <laughs> 
the way is the way out. That's what it is. The way out is through. Okay. He's not just going to. There you are. Wee. Put your over here and over there. The way out is through. You have to go through it. Okay. And the other one is, I think it's a Ryan Holiday quote. The obstacle is the way. The tough thing that you are uh, trying to resist doing is the answer to your problems. So stop putting it off. Do it. Okay? Stop putting it out of your brain. Stop trying to neglect it. The tough thing that you are avoiding is the answer to your problems. Okay? Stop waiting on a miracle. The miracle happens when you start changing your life. If you change you, your life starts to change. We're wanting all this change. We want things to get better. Things get better in your life when it starts with you. So, many things, many, many things, many distresses, many, um, many hard times, times of being unhappy, <laughs> distressed, the troubles, the evils, the raw, many, but Hashem takes them through them, okay? When you are presented with this trouble, I want to give you one piece of advice. Never lose yourself. Never lose your identity. Never lose who you are. No matter what comes, hold fast to your integrity, to who you are. That's authenticity. Be genuine to yourself, no matter what comes upon you. Okay? The way out is through. The obstacle is the way. So, he is close to those who are brokenhearted and crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but Hashem delivers him out of them all. He is guarding all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil slays the wicked, and those who hate the righteous are guilty. Hashem redeems the lives of his servants, and none of those taking refuge in him are guilty. Exodus 12. Remember what we said last week, <laughs> living is a part of life, death is a part of life, suffering is a part of life, okay? Challenges are a part of life. It's, what's, it's what happens, you can't get away from it, okay? So how you react to those challenges determines your perceptive, uh, perception. And uh, there's another good quote out there, you see two ways. Everybody sees two ways, okay? You see with your physical eye, and then the other one is called insight. You see with your mind, okay? And your mind governs the way that you see with your eyes. That's your perception, okay? This, this. If you think it's hard and it's not going to get any better, you're right. You're right. If you think it's hard and you like the challenge and you're going to push through, you're right, okay? You are your own worst enemy, and your own hero. So Exodus 12 and 29. And it came to be at midnight that Hashem smote all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim. So everybody knows where we're at, Exodus 12 and 29. Uh, this is one of the reasons why that we do daylight to daylight as the full day is because if this was midnight, the sun had already gone down. This is not the 14th day. This is the 15th day. They're celebrating on the 15th day of the month, not the 14th day, which is not Passover. That's the next day, okay? Now, also, there are certain festivals and days that do begin at nightfall, okay? So tonight, whenever the sun goes down, go eat your bread, <laughs> okay? Go eat your pizza, whatever you're going to eat, okay? So that's fine, whatever it is. But I'm just saying this is one of the reasons why that we do the day, uh, daylight to daylight for a full day, okay? Because this midnight was still on Passover. It was the 14th day. So, and it came to be, otherwise it would have been the 15th day. Everybody get that? Hopefully that's simply understood. So, 
uh, land of Mitzrayim for the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the livestock. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Mitzrites, and there was a great cry of Mitzrayim, for there was not a house where there was not one dead or a dead one. We talked about that last week. Uh, then he called for Moshe and Aharon by night and said, Arise, go from the midst of the people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve Hashem, as you have said. Take both your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and go, then you shall barak me too. And the Mitzrites urged the people to hasten, so get out, go, to send them away out of the land, for they said, We are all dying. That's what the Egyptians are saying. Like, we ain't got nothing left. They are a burden to us. Get them out of here. So, the Mitzrites urged the people, verse 34, and the people took their dough. So we're going to talk about the leaven this morning, the very end of this. This has to have a purpose of why we're doing this day. Uh, and the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bows bound up in their garments on their shoulders. Okay. So what does the leavened bread stand for? Anybody know? What does the leavened bread stand for? Why do we do this festival? Anybody know? It has nothing to do with Jesus. Okay, has nothing to do with sin. And I saw people this week posting stuff on uh, what these medieval rabbis were saying about the atonement of the Passover. The Passover was not an atonement. The Passover was not a sin, uh, a sin offering. And we see that often too much through that. If you just read what's in context and you don't take it out of context and you don't make it say something it doesn't say, it was a protection of the firstborn, period. Okay, and we talked about that last week. As it just said right here, there was only one dead in the house. One dead. There was not a house that did not have one dead. Not a whole family. If it was a sin offering, we said that before, and we'll say that again. Why didn't Pharaoh die? Because he was the center of them all. It was not a sin offering. It was not a passing over of atonement. It was a protection of your family genealogy. It protected your firstborn, which was the next of the head of the household. Period. 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 So, there was not one, there was not a house without one dead. So, call, go. They took their dough. What is the dough? Uh, I'll get back to what we're talking about. What is leavening? It's a representation, not of sin, how fast we came out of Egypt. That's what it is. Okay? which goes back to what this is about. Now, if we had a title for this message, it would be called In Haste, okay? Just in a snap of the finger, your life can change, okay? Imagine, I think it's 120 years that they were in slavery in Egypt, even though it says 430. The beginning of the slavery started with Jacob, okay? And it ended once they came out. Because if you look, the promise of the prophecy was made to who? Abraham, okay? So it was Abraham's seed who was in Egypt in affliction, okay? They shall spend 400 years in affliction, okay? But it started with Jacob. Isaac had a fairly easy life. There's not much said about Isaac, okay? His, his life was not that bad. Jacob's life was bad. He suffered, okay? So... That's the full amount of time. But through all that suffering, 400 years, eventually, like we're talking about in Ecclesiastes 3, there is a beginning and an end to everything. And one day, they're out. And I tell you, and I'm dealing with my knee, okay? Um, I'm dealing with the problems of my knee and trying to get it back to where I can jump and hop. Okay, but anyway, uh, I'm trying to get it back to where it needs to be. Okay, where I can do explosive movements with my knee. But I learned also through this week, it's a process. And that's what I don't like about it. I want it now. Okay, I want it done. Okay, but it's a process. So I have to be patient with the process. Don't, uh, the way out is through. Okay, I got to do my PT. I got to do the dry needling. I've got to do the workouts they gave me. I've got to do this. I've got to do that in order for that tendon to be strengthened again. So praise Hashem that he gave me this knee. Because you know what he's telling me? Slow down and enjoy your life. Okay? Stop worrying about what has happened. Stop fretting about what will happen. You are here right now. I'm slowing you down so you'll just relax a little bit. 
Stop scrutinizing yourself. Stop being so critical of yourself. Stop judging yourself so harshly. Live according to my word. And if you, if you look when it talks about it in Ecclesiastes 9, he says, wear white garments. So be clean before people. But also he says in that, enjoy your life. We miss out on that. That's why I love Torah. That's why I love Tanakh. Because it's focusing on your life now. Not what's coming up. Not what's already passed. Now. So, continuing on. What is the representation of the leaven? It's just how fast they had to get out of there. In a moment, your life can change. After a hundred and, I can't remember the exact time of Egypt or how long that they, they were in Mitzrayim, but after a long period of time, one day, their whole life changed. There is a beginning and an end to everything. Verse 35. And the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moshe, and they had asked from, uh, from the Mitzrites objects of silver and objects of gold and garments, and Hashem gave the people favor in the eyes of, Mitz of the Mitzrites, so that they gave them what they asked, and they plundered the Mitzrites. So um, time, season, appointed time for everything, and we see how the Mitzrites had all, these gold, all this gold and riches, and now it's given to the Israelites. Okay? So that's just how your life can change in a moment. Okay, so don't give up. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't faint. Don't fail. Continue to trust in Hashem. I'm telling you, He's going to take you where you're going. He will not fail you. How many times does it say that? He's not going to fail you. You just got to trust in Him. Everything's going to be okay. It's all going to work out. Stop trying to control it. As it comes, embrace it. As it leaves, let it go. It's tough. But I tell you, you'll have an easier life <laughs> if you would just let it be. Just let it be. So, objects of silver and objects of gold and garments. Verse 36, And Hashem gave the people favor in the eyes of the Mitzrites so that they gave them uh, what they asked. Hey, I want that pot over there and... Give me the head over there. So <laughs> they're asking and yeah, give it to them. And they plundered the Mitzrites. And the children of Israel, verse 37 of Israel, departed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 men on foot besides the little ones. Now that is a miracle, but it's a miracle based on obedience. Okay, Hashem promised by his word, they believed his word and here we go. And they baked unleavened cakes of dough, which they had brought out of Mitzrayim, for it was not leavened since they were driven out of Mitzrayim. They were pushed out. And they had not been able to delay, nor had they prepared food for themselves. So they didn't have time. It was that quick. Your life can change in a moment. Verse 40. And the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Mitzrayim was 430 years. So we just talked about that. And it came to be at the end of the 430 years, on that same day, it came to be that all the divisions of Hashem went out from the land of Mitzrayim. And it came to be at the end. At the end. That word end is cuts. It is end. At the end. The end of time. It was the border. Now you're passing on into a new portion of your life. Okay. Egypt is done. Let Egypt go, okay? Can't change about what happened in Egypt, okay? Learn from what happened in Egypt and go on with your life. You're at the border. You can't go back. They wanted to go back. Why did they want to go back, okay? If you thought that it was hard or we think that it was hard in Egypt before they got sent out, it was really going to be tough going back because they had to rebuild the whole nation. Everything was destroyed everything. It would have been really tough. Okay. So, and that's what we learned through these hard times. Okay. If, if you have been separated from something, okay, leave it alone. Because if you go back, it's going to be worse on you. Let it go. If you go back, you think going back is going to be okay. But if you have been released from something, if you go back, it's going to be 10 times worse. Okay? And some of us have experienced that. So don't do it. Go forward. Move forward in your life. 
So, and at that night, uh, they observed, so that was the end. The time was over. And that same day, they were gone. It is a night to be observed unto Hashem, verse 42, for bringing them out of the land of Mitzrayim in haste. That's why we do the unleavened bread. That's why we remember the unleavened bread because he brought us out so quick. And we need to remember now that that's how fast our life can change. When we remember this, look how quick our lives changed coming out of Egypt. And Hashem said to Moshe and to Aharon, this is the law of the Pesach, uh, read 40, uh, 42. It is a night to be observed unto Hashem for bringing them out of the land of Mitzrayim. The night is unto Hashem to be observed by all the children of Israel throughout their generations. And Hashem said to Moshe and to Aharon, this is the law of the Pesach. No son of a stranger is to eat of it, but any servant, a man has, uh, has bought for silver, uh, a man has bought for silver, any servant, when you have circumcised him, then let him eat of it. A sojourner and a hired servant does not eat of it. It is eaten in one house, and you are not to take any of the flesh outside the house, nor are you to break any bone of it. All the congregation of Israel are to perform it. And when a stranger sojourns with you and shall perform the Pesach to Hashem, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and perform it. You are a part of Israel now, and he shall be as a native of the land. So it's just like you were born there. But let no one circumcised eat of it. You have to be of Israel, okay? Which is showing us who is our God, like we talked about last week. Who is our God? He is our God. We are his people, and he is special to us, and he protects us. He's going to take care of us. They can have their gods. Whatever. I'm not worried about your gods, okay? I'm not trying to take your God away from you. I don't want to take your God. I got my own, okay? And he is the one true living El. Take your God, okay? And we'll see in the end who prevails, just like Elijah, okay? Let's get that. <laughs> we'll see, okay? So the sojourner, if he wants to, the stranger, uh, any servant, and when a stranger sojourns with you and shall perform the Pesach, let him be circumcised. Let no uncircumcised eat of it. Verse 49, there is one Torah for the native born and for the stranger who sojourns among you. So one Torah for all. Anyone who wants to come in, it's yours. And all the children of Israel did as Hashem commanded Moshe and Haran, uh, so they did. And it came to be on the same day, that same day that Hashem brought the children of Israel out of the land of Mitzrayim according to their divisions. So it all started with Jacob in Egypt. Deuteronomy 16, and we'll close out. So, there's a point in time for everything. There is a beginning and an end. But you also realize as long as breath is in your lungs, you have the ability to do better. You have the ability to change. You have the ability to enjoy your life. If you get anything out of Ecclesiastes, enjoy what you got. Enjoy it. Embrace this present time. Okay? So, uh, Deuteronomy 16 and verse 1, guard the month of Aviv or Abib, and perform the Pesach to Hashem, your Elohim, for in the month of Abib, Hashem, your Elohim, brought you out of the Mitzrayim by night. And you shall slaughter the Pesach to Hashem, your Elohim, from the flock and the herd in the place where Hashem chooses to put his name. Eat no leavened bread with it. For seven days you eat unleavened bread with it, bread of affliction. Why are we doing this? This is the end of it. But why were we doing it? Okay. Bread of affliction. That affliction is ani. It is affliction. It is bread of poverty. It is bread of misery. It is bread of depression. It is bread of trouble. Okay? You're doing this to remember what happened in Egypt. Okay? That you didn't have anything. And he brought you out and he took care of you. Okay? I want you to realize, and we'll talk about that on Sabbath, that Hashem came to you where you were. That's in Ezekiel. He came to you and accepted you where you were. He accepted you in bondage and he turned you into who you are today. Let's say a hallelujah. Okay. So it's the bread of affliction. What does the unleavened represent? Our time in Egypt and how quick our life can change. It does not have anything to do with sin. The, the leavened bread is not sin. 
The raising of the bread is not puffing you up. It is not pride. That is not what that is, okay? He plainly tells you what his festivals mean. He plainly tells you how to observe them. He plainly tells you without any interpretation from anyone else what to do and what they mean without adding to it or taking away from it. So what is the unleavened bread for? It's a bread of affliction. You are remembering, you are remembering your misery and your depression and then how Hashem brought you out. And he brought you out quickly, fast. Because, talk about the knee again. I'm going to go through the process, okay? But I have hope and I have this confident expectation that one day I'm going to look back and remember this after it's healed. After it's done. Get that? One day you're going to look back on this time, this hard time that you had, and you're going to look back and think, wow, I'm here now. I'm not back there. So don't go back and relive it. <laughs> you can go back and say, thank you. Here I am. I learned what I needed to. But don't go back and continue to relive it. Ground yourself. Be grounded here. Not what's coming up. Not what's already passed. You will have a life of more ease when you do that. Is everybody here? Present? Okay. <laughs> present? Yes. Okay. It's like a, a roll call of the class. Are you present? I'm here right now. Okay. So where are we? Right here. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> uh, what does it mean? It is the bread of affliction. It is the, the haste that we came out. It was the bread of depression because that's about the flattest bread that you can have. Okay. That's about, it's broken. Okay. It was low. It was nothing. So eat no leavened bread with it. For seven days you eat unleavened bread with it. Bread of affliction, because he's given you the answer right here, what it means, because you came out of the land of Mitzrayim in haste. That is kippazon. It is hurriedly in haste, hasty flight. So what does the unleavened bird mean? We know now. So remember the day in which you came out of the land of Mitzrayim all the days of your life. And no leaven should be seen within all your borders for seven days, neither should the meat which you slaughter in the evening on the first day stay all night until morning. You are not allowed to slaughter the Pesach within any of your gates which Hashem your Elohim gives you, but at the, at the place where Hashem your Elohim chooses to make his name dwell, there you slaughter the Pesach in the evening. At the going down of the sun, at the appointed time. Okay, fixed. Fixed time. You came out of Mitzrayim. You shall roast and eat it in the place which Hashem your Elohim chooses, and in the morning you shall turn and go to your tents. Six days you eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there is a closing festival to Hashem your Elohim. You do no work. It's the end. Okay? It's the end of unleavened bread, but it is the beginning of spring. There is an end to everything. There is a beginning to everything. Okay? And you can always start something new. So what does unleavened bread mean? It is the bread of affliction and how fast we came out. Get it? Say it again. It's the bread of affliction and how fast we came out. Of what? Affliction. Okay? So your life can change in a moment. And oh, how fast it could be. You will look back and think, wow. In haste. Hope everybody has a blessed Shabbat, the last day of unleavened bread. Baruch Hashem.